Welcome to the Battle Buddy Podcast with Keith McKeever. Welcome back to another episode. Today I've got a great guest with me. If you've been paying attention to my podcast from day one, you'll probably recognize this name. This is the first repeat guest on the Battle Buddy Podcast. I couldn't be more excited to bring my friend Yerka Castanada up here. Before we do, though, just remember, remind you, to go make sure you like and follow, subscribe, no matter where you're watching uh, this podcast or listening to it. Make sure you like and subscribe and follow and share it with your friends. That's that's really important. And if you feel feel like it, uh, leave a review. That really helps, too. I really, really appreciate that. Without further ado, Nierka, welcome back to the Battle Buddy Podcast. You hold the distinction of the first repeat guest. Thank you so much for having me and for giving me that honor. I really right, well, I, I'm, I'm always excited to talk to you. I mean, we talk so frequently in different different chats and stuff like that. I've known you for, gosh, what, two years now, something like that. Yeah. So it's always fun and exciting. And I figured, you know, hey, it's about time. You know, it's approaching 70 episodes. It's about time I bring back some of the early guests and, um, you know, get that uh, where's New York now moment. You know, <laughs> trying to think of the TV show where they do that. We're going to bring back so-and-so and see where they're at. Get a life update. But you've got, a, you've got like a million different things that have been, you've been going on over the last – Gosh, like a year and a half or so, however long it's been since I had you on. I think you were episode six, if I remember right. So um, yeah. with with that, give us a little update um, on who is Nierka, your background, your military story. Share that with us again, if you can. I'm a veteran, right? Um, I'm a veteran that turned into an entrepreneur and founded a more umbrella. The and I tell you, it wasn't an easy, smooth transition. It never is. It was a day to day because after almost serving almost 20, uh, 20 plus years on the military, one way or another, not all I to duty, <laughs> that was my home. So I turned into a civilian. I did the school uh, and I ended up making a class project into uh, a business, a more umbrella. That's how I founded a more umbrella. And it just has grown because that was, that was an adventure for me. And a full adventure and full immersive adventures. And, and every day I wake up thinking, what can I do? What can I add to provide a holistic solution to all the problems that we continue. And, you know, and I try to serve the military um, and the veteran community as much as I can. And there's more than one way that we can do that. Um, so, yeah, that's why I guess. I guess I didn't realize that that uh, that your umbrellas was a, was a school project. So, I mean, I need to go back to school. So you check that box, right? That's, that's like... Be- to do checkbox item when you transition, <laughs> get out, go to the VA, uh, figure out where you're going to live and register for school. I think that's like, <laughs> that's like everybody's transition f- first four steps, right? Something like that. Yes. It, it was a big decision. Like, you know, they, of course I did what everybody does. I went my young home and, you know, I figured out real quick that might not be the quick solution. Uh, you know, it's a job. You're trying to find a job and not just a job, but the job that actually fulfill you and a job that you can even tolerate because I'm still serving in the military, being stuck in four walls with civilians that don't understand you. It's not as easy. You know, it depends how many years you serve in the military, how used you get to, to that life. But you've been probably a year, you got pretty used to it. Uh, you got out before, maybe, you know, it was an easier transition. Um, so I, I did get a couple jobs in and out, and they just didn't fit. It wasn't the same thing. You know, I worked for the military as a civilian, uh, as a government contractor and as a federal uh, government. I didn't wear the uniform, but I was still serving with the same people the same soldiers wearing the uniform right next to me. So it wasn't really a difference. Yeah. Yeah. I I still feel like I was in, even if I was a civilian, technically. 
Um, but when you completely out, now you know when the uniform, now you don't have the people surrounded to you that are wearing that same uniform with the same values. It's not the uniform, it's the values, the, the structure, uh, the mission uh, driven people that surround you. Um, it's quite different. So that's why, I, you know, I ended up choosing a school and they had a respiration day. So I definitely had to choose that because after I pay all that money, I didn't want it to go to waste. Yeah, yeah. that would be smart. I mean, <laughs> it's kind of like my story. I, I realized I had a couple of years left to use my GI Bill and I'm like, well, I, I got to go back to school and get my degree. Like I, I would never be able to live with that decision of not going back to do that. That just yeah, wouldn't make sense. Yeah, exactly. Why why would you pay all that money, put all that time? Because that's not something that everybody can do. You have to do it because of your service and let it go to waste. And you don't use it for, you don't want to go get a, a high career for your job because you were an entrepreneur. You said to build your business. That's what I did. Every class I took from that class project on, it was to build my business. You know, and I still am. I still in school, and in film, TV, and video production now, because I continue to use it as another resource to build my business. You know? That's a natural transition, uh, or, or natural um, education plan for you. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that there's another program out there that fits you, like you know, film and media production and stuff like that, because you've you've done some some pretty cool stuff over the last couple of years well ever since we interviewed last you put together a tv show that's on legacy media mm -hmm. and you traveled around the world well around the country i don't know mm -hmm. if you went internationally on that one but you traveled all around i know you were all over the place there for a little while interviewing veteran nonprofits and people that were just doing things to you know for the veteran community so tell us a little bit about your show and uh what, what all that was about what that was aimed for well, that, you know, that was my pivot because when I, when I started, when COVID thing started, it made us kind of reanalyze everything we were doing, right? And you know, a lot of people were buying umbrellas and that was my whole business when I started. Um, so I kind of decided to focus on what it actually meant. Uh, what was the purpose and the mission I had behind the whole Umbrella project? And it just become a project. So I decided to turn it into a TV show. And it was called Amor Umbrella uh, TV at the time. Now it's called Umbrellas of Hope. Just to make it uh, more clear to what it's about. And that's what my purpose is, is to provide hope by connecting you to the resources that you need. And, you know, information and education and entertainment because there's a huge, huge misinformation gap in the military community. We have so many people going through so many different problems. And there's so, like, last time I checked, it was like 75,000 nonprofits alone. But people don't know about it. They don't know where to turn when they need help. You know? So that's what I try to focus on with my show, is to highlight those resources those uh organizations non-profit and for-profit because you don't have to be a non-profit to do good you can be a for-profit and do good you know depends it depends who's behind the driver wheel right absolutely I, I just interviewed a civilian a few weeks ago who created a sock company socks made out of boom bamboo which were actually really comfortable but it's a for-profit company by a civilian but 30% of his proceeds go back to Veteran Community Project and Mission 22. Exactly. And it's like, but, wow. That, and that was really cool. That, I never thought I was having a, a conversation about socks on a podcast. But <laughs> but a perfect example of somebody who's just trying to, you know, like, hey, look, I can make some profit, run a profitable business, and give back to the veteran community, even though he's not a veteran, which is awesome. Exactly. And, that, and that's my point. And, and I try to highlight uh, stories like that. You know, and founders, and including veteran founders that they just turn in an idea and turn in something extraordinary. Um, so, 
I, I think we have Fran, we have uh, Robert, uh, Steven and Lane already on the show, and that's just the beginning. Um, and now we're coming up with the business and art um, series and the better focus mini series where I'm going to be tackling creativity and I'm going to be tackling business solutions, art solutions, and even more resources by highlighting the organizations that provide the solutions, but also showing what the problem is. How, because you only focus on the problem, but you don't provide the solutions. How are you helping? Darn good point. It, it, it starts, uh, you got to start with fixing the, fixing the problem, right? You know, if you get water in your basement, well, mopping up the water is just going to mean more water comes back in if you don't address the issues on the outside where it's coming in, right? But, um, yeah, you, that, that, was, that was great. I have some questions on that business and art infusion here in a minute. But for the show, we were recording that. I'm very curious uh, what you found to be the most surprising nonprofit that you interviewed. Was there somebody that you knew a little bit about, but when you met them and you found out what they were really doing, you're like, wow, this is so much cooler uh, bigger, whatever than than you thought. There's so many, and, and I try to go meet them in person, uh, so that kind of limit my scope. Uh, so I'm trying to find alternative solutions. I meet them in person because it's something different about actually see them do the job that they're saying than they just telling you and showcasing that as well. Uh, there, there are a lot of them out there. Um, I did fishing with American Finance. They take soldiers, and, and kind of one of my one of my first episodes. Uh, I actually started with that was um, they they take veterans to go fishing on the Everglades, and a lot of people say, "What the Everglades? Carries, it's crocodiles, it's alligators." It's fishing, yeah, crocodile fishing, fishing for alligators. But oh my God, it's mind blowing. You know, out of that trip. And, and the first thing I went just was just a fishing trip, right? I got a book. I wrote a book about it. I made an episode. That's what kind of my first episode on the TV show. And I got together with veteran women with uh, or veteran soldiers. Uh, the, the initiative was born out of there because being there in nature, in a place that kind of engaged all my, my senses, Give me the creative space to keep multiplying my ideas. You know, and I started with one idea, and then I keep repurposing the idea and keep making it bigger and bigger. Uh, and that was just because it took people in a fishing trip. But it's not just a fishing trip. The last thing I did was fishing, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> that's, where, that's not where the real value in it is, right? I mean, you're fishing, but that's not what you should be getting out of it. Yeah, I got the proof. I got a fish. I got a, I got a, a picture it was with, this a, big, with wasn't a fish. It? No. <laughs> <laughs> and we put it back in the water. So we didn't Here, God, the one that you put on the hook doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, you know, it, it's kind of a catch and release. But the, the real magic of what it's doing, and a lot of other organizations are doing in their own uh, locations, is he's building community. He's, and he was really, as uh, Captain Neil was, you know, telling stories the whole trip and, you know, and you can see the move improve. We had like two boats full of people and the one chasing us with a camera. And you can see that like, you know, they came, they were with the families, they were moody. And some of them were arguing with the kids for a little bit. And then while, Two, three hours later, they were laughing. Relationships were made. It was beautiful, you know, and one of the best uh, night sleep I have for a long time, you know, it bought me like a week of restful uh, sleep because that sense of business, that sense of community, it stayed with me for a while, you know, and and that's alternative to me. I know the solution to the problem, right? Because who needs that? Besides people that have PTSD, besides people that have anxiety, besides people that maybe you don't have 
they can talk to the families um, because whatever trauma they have and they don't know how to communicate. B5 people that are just overwhelmed with all the business of civilian life, traffic and all the different problems, but that take you away completely in the wild. There's no, I think there's, that's one of the widest places in the United States to ever go. Yeah, and you see bird fly, you can take pictures, you can rest, you can see the water, it's magical. It's kind of like how, uh, you know, a lot of people think back to their times being deployed, being overseas, you know, as, as good times in some ways, where you have less to worry about. You don't really work, you're not thinking about the bills, you're not thinking about all this other stuff in life, you're just in a different environment mm -hmm. where you have less to think about, and you can just kind of let your... Let your mind just go, you know, and you're around other people and you just talk and converse. And n next thing you're not worried about that meeting that you have in three days or the problem that happened last week or whatever the case may be. And, and it give you the, the space to come up with the solutions. Maybe you were you still worry about that meeting, but now you have a solution. Now you have a space to deal with it in a more relaxed way where you're not. Oh, my God. You know, I'm going to take a gun and whatever and end up being overwhelmed. So, yeah, that's that's one of the uh, nonprofits, uh, one of my favorites uh, so far. There's a lot more to me. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure they all. A little something. And it doesn't matter where they are because I love to travel. That's, <laughs> that's part of the deal is going there and showing the community, showing uh, the environments on what they're actually doing in person because that engage people. And you also tell them, okay, I'm in Canada or I'm in Washington. I cannot really go fishing in the Everglades, but maybe you can go to your national park. It's right there mm -hmm. and have the kind of the same effect because you, guess what? You're going to be close to nature. You yeah. Be, or you can go do painting. You can do photography. You can do filming. There's so many different ways to do. If you don't like that, there's other alternatives. There's other solutions. My my friend does uh, flowers, flower arrangement, and she used the Akevana flower arrangement. That's their flowers, and she turned it into flower arrangements. Pretty unique. It's, it's actually art. It's suiting art. A Japanese suiting art. So the possibilities are endless. It's just finding that thing that works for you. I think in California, there's an organization that let you talk to parents. It works for some people. <laughs> <laughs> I guess in some cases, the parents won't talk back. But one of, one of the things I love about the fact that you're making that into a TV show and you're highlighting it that way is, like you said, you know, there's 75,000 nonprofits out there. I mean, there are so many nonprofits, and they do things at different scales. You have little ones that like nobody's ever heard of. Yeah, you got Wounded Warrior Project and Blue Star Families and just first two names that popped in my head. They're big ones. Everybody knows about them. But then you got all these little small ones that have little adventures here or art stuff. I know in my area there's a guy does 22 VA and it's all about art, art, music, stuff like that. They just get together and they just create stuff. And that's just, you know, for them, the part of, of healing, being together, doing creative stuff. And we're, you know, we're just around other veterans and they, they do it on a relatively small scale. I mean, they're not national, they're not really statewide, but they have a huge impact, you know, on the people that they touch, which is awesome. And it kind of vets some of that stuff out by having it on video, which is even better because it's hard to be like, is this a legit nonprofit or not? Because exactly. let's face the reality, <laughs> you know, as well as I do, there are some uh, bad nonprofits out there. There are people, there are organizations out there that will take advantage of you and they'll promise you this, that, and the other, and they're not going to deliver on it. And, but there are people out there with a heart of gold who will do anything to help somebody just escape for a weekend. Exactly. And, and that's, and that's part of my, where I also want to go meet them in person and see what they do. Cause and that's my own betting process, right? I want to make sure that who I put in there and highlighting it's actually doing, they have the true intentions. 
And it's not only about serving, it's kind of building also connecting map of resources and find ways for them to collaborate with each other. Because if you're solving uh, homelessness in this country, in, in this state, or in this county, but there's a, a potential uh, solution in another county, why are they not working together? Why are they not referring to each other? You know, and now you cover more people. It's not yeah. anything about competition, right? It's collaboration. It's key. Collaboration, yeah. I mean, you could be uh, doing uh, outdoor activities in, in, I mean, Illinois, right? Let's just say Illinois. But you only service, like, let's say, Illinois, Iowa, Missouri. Well, it would make sense to, to find another nonprofit that's really doing a good job in, I don't know, Indiana and Ohio and Kentucky, right? Where if somebody reaches out to you and say, hey, I, I want to go on an adventure, but I live in eastern Kentucky, we're like, well, hey, you know, we'll take you here or there's a, there's a location closer to you. Let's get you in touch with those people. You know, it just it makes sense. Um, I know that, you know, I'm involved with Honor Flight and, you know, we do that with the Chicago Hub. Sometimes they have people that they can't send. So they send them down to us and we're like, okay, we'll do our best to get them on a flight. You know, like it, it's a, it's about just making it happen one way or another. Yeah. And, and that's exactly what I mean. It's, that's a good example. They're on a flight and that's one of the ones that need to go meet. Oh, uh, shit. Anyway. Anybody listening or watching, if you don't know what Honor Flight is, I'm gonna just—I I have to just say this for a minute. You have to find your local hub, find out when they fly, and first of all, go to the welcome home. Go go to whatever their welcome home is. I, I I might be biased that ours here in Greater Peoria, we do it really well. We have a small airport, and we pack that place with two to three thousand people for the welcome home. It is incredibly powerful, but go to it if you are a veteran. Vietnam, Korea veteran, or if there happens to be a World War II veteran in here, somebody knows one that hasn't gone, contact the local hub and get those guys signed up. It is a trip of a lifetime. They get to go to Washington, D.C. for free, see their memorials, have one heck of a day. Um, unless you're in, in Alaska, it's like a three-day trip. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's an absolute blast. It's a great chance for guys to heal, especially the Vietnam veterans. Um, I've seen a lot of Vietnam veterans break down and cry, and I've heard the stories afterwards that they are changed individuals. Their outlook on life changes. They finally get the welcome home they deserve. But anyway, that is an organization, Yurka, you definitely need to to get to highlighting. It sounds like it, and that's definitely, that's definitely needed. You know, we all need to feel welcome. Yep, Absolutely. So your business and art and fusion summit. Thank you uh -huh. once again for letting me speak in there. I, I, I talked about time management and stuff, but you had a lot of great guests. So tell us a little bit about, you kind of alluded to it a little bit earlier, but tell us a little bit more about what that was and the inspiration behind it. So that was my way of bringing work together. Um, I think we have so many dividing lines everywhere. <laughs> veterans, military, civilians, children, business, art. And instead of having so many lines divided, how while we don't infuse it together? How don't we enrich our lives? Uh, you know, because how many business can get enriched by applying a little bit of art and creativity to it? How many art business and creative people can enrich can empower themselves by adding the structure from business, the fundamentals that you need, right? And bring it together. And it also goes to the point of me providing solutions because coming from the military, there's a lot of people that are artistic that uh, I like to consider myself artistic, um, that, you know, once you let that lead off, <laughs> you cannot put it back and you need to find a way to be creative and, and it's kind of shed away from those uh that structure that we it got embedded on us by the military right and, and kind of a different mindset entrepreneurs do that a lot because you have to think outside the bus in order to be an entrepreneur there's a difference between a businessman and entrepreneur and that's it you have to think outside the box and you have to be creative 
and you have to come up with solutions all the time to problems that keep arising. So when you well, add art, uh, art leads to creativity and creativity, that's what you need. And we all can are capable of it. You know, that's something that was given to us from the moment we were born, but we forget. Yeah. And uh, I was just going to say that there's different levels. You know, everybody needs to assess their self, right? I consider myself an entrepreneur, but I'm a very logical person. Mm-hmm. Everything has to be neat and orderly, logical, has to make sense. But I can also get creative on my thoughts sometimes. My creative lacking is more of like creating digital images and stuff like that, right? Like I am, I don't get that creative. <laughs> I don't, I don't have an eye for that. I can get creative with some loose solutions and stuff, but it, it is interesting. And I've met a lot of artists who their their life, you know, they can't manage their time. They they just everything just it just flows through life. There's no structure and no order. And I sit back and look at it like how like how do you not have a schedule? How do you not have things organized? Whatever you know, it's like I can't, I can't understand it. It's so fundamentally different for me. So we can all use like a little something, and I think that's what was brilliant about what you put together. You know, because I was able to share time management. You know, I, mine was called the art of time. You know, and I just it was basically a top ten list of. Here's things you can do to take back control of your time and manage it more efficiently, which face it. I mean, we could all use help with that. Even some of the examples I gave, sometimes I even struggle with being consistent on, but they help, they work, but. And and that's the thing, like we only had 24 hours in a day. So how you make that last? And it's not, but no, everyone's 24 hours. I feel the same way. Because what are you what are you getting out of those 24 hours? Are you binge watching on Netflix? That's probably enjoyable, but you probably nothing, well, you know, nothing hey, got qual- done. Quality of lifetime, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to do that once, but maybe not six days a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you probably enjoy the show, but you know, you do it every day, your hours are going away. And maybe the stuff that were priorities never got done. Um and so yeah, that, that was what I was trying to do. And I believe, and I, and I firm believe in that when you create it, you know, when you are creating, you're being innovative, you're inventing something, and we all can be created. You know, that there's a, <laughs> that's another misinformation. We see that we're not creative, but just having the ability to coming up with solutions, that means you're creative. No, as I said, like I can come up with solutions, <laughs> but I can't like actual artwork, like painting, drawing. That's not my creative kind of thing. I can sit there and create a think creative solutions. I'm just not a great artist when it comes to, to those but things, you know, art is subjective. Art is subjective and you don't have to like every single art form. You don't have to practice every single art form. Um, I think in Miami, they, they had a, a exhibition in the museum in a museum a quality museum piece, uh, a banana with tape in the wall. That was art. And so, so you're saying I can so start like stick the, figures. It's thinking outside the box. That's what creativity is. That's what art is. You know, it doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be. There's, there's some art that are amazing and it's pretty scary, but inside a feeling. And that's what it is. You know, whatever you call it, innovative, invention, it's all at the end of the day, it's all the same thing. We are being creative in our own ways. We don't have to be the same because then we end up being very monotonous, right? Yeah. Well, Mona Lisa wouldn't look that great if everybody could paint her, right? Right. (laughs) So the Mona Lisa, it took 16 years to get done, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Talk about patience. Holy cow. (laughs) Oh, man. But uh, yeah. Yeah, and he used to feel like a failure all the time. He used to feel like he wasn't good enough. Well, I mean, if it takes you 60 years to paint something, how could you not feel like a failure at some point? 16 years. <laughs> 16, okay. Yeah, I mean, either way, like, it's, it's crazy. Um, 
so what we're, what, you know, you are uniquely suited, uh, suited to answer this question since you put on the summit and you listen to everybody's speech. So I'm real curious. What were your key takeaways that impacted you? So many. And I invite you to watch them because I'm actually talking about them. Uh, the episodes are coming up really soon. Uh, um, I think, and, and that's part of the post-production, I, I get to rewatch every single presentation. And, oh my God, the impacts are even bigger because we all need time management. We all need to protect our ideas. We need to find the space to create. Uh, we need to have uh, so many topics. You know, the meaning of colors, like just surrounding ourselves by colors. We can make, make our environments. We can allow the space to be more creative, to be peaceful, to, you know, to be restful when you need it. It, it can change your mood drastically. So I think every one of the presentations were unique in their own way and they were powerful they were very powerful so i invite everybody to watch it because if you didn't catch it on the summit i definitely catch it now because that's your chance um i think there was another one uh and i'm trying to remember it's like 71 speakers so. <laughs> yeah, there, was, there was a lot kind of a loaded a question lot. i set you up on now <laughs> Yeah, it was a lot. Um, oh, neuroscience, the power of neuroscience, uh, Ikebana. I'm a big fan. Uh, my friend, uh, she speak about both. <laughs> Who are so, right? It's flower arrangements. And but being artistic, is, is, look at that. Using a flower arrangement, how many flower arrangements we see all the time? And they're beautiful flowers, so many shapes, so many different thing but she found a way to make that unique because she doesn't do any regular flower arrangement she used that flowers and that material dry materials to make flower arrangements and they're beautiful hmm. you know so even when you are applying creativity to something that's creative you can be out of the box you know it, it depends on you and just that, how many people use junk? They recycle it and they turn into art. Because remember, somebody else junk is somebody else treasure. That's a good point. I mean, there's a lot of guys out there that, that are into welding and cutting metal. And uh, they just take all kinds of scrap stuff and build it into sculptures and dinosaurs and bicycles and whatever else, you know. Dinosaurs riding bicycles. <laughs> Yeah, I assume he hasn't done yet. They should, but and, and it can be, and it doesn't have to be used artistic. It doesn't have to be used uh, beautiful to look at. It can be useful. Nike, Nike. There, they. You know, you can donate uh, your tennis shoes, your broken tennis shoes to Nike. Any tennis shoes. It don't have to be used Nike. You know, they they grab that sole of the tennis shoes. And they repurpose it and they turn it into uh, that foam that they use in the playgrounds. Oh, okay. They turn that into foam and they sell that as a brand new product. You know, and it's not cheap. <laughs> and they're using recycled materials. So you see how useful that is just applying that creativity in your own business. Because it can make you come out, be resourceful, and come out with solutions uh, to problems and lower your costs of doing business. You know, uh, there was somebody else that I, I know that she started doing frames uh, with cedar sheep, and she got that from the little bits that were left behind uh, from a furniture store. And she was selling these frames, make a really good wood. She put it together in an artistic way, and people were buying it for like forty, sixty dollars. Yeah, that and was, that's uh, something they were throwing away. Well, <laughs> that's literally making something out of nothing, right? You know, what was going to exactly. end up in a landfill saves it for the landfill, repurposes it, and it allows somebody to create a business off of it. And 
yes. create and, and creates a way of life, creates a sustainable solution. Because how many how many militaries, how many veterans are struggling financially? Well, we all we we, we definitely personally know that uh, our troops aren't paid enough. Uh, there's there's a few issues there. We could go down that rabbit hole for for an hour, <laughs> but yeah, you have a good point. And it's not that they get paid enough only; it's that they're not taught financial fundamentals. I don't think almost anybody in the society is taught any good enough financial fundamentals. So you end up with a lot of high debt and not a way to sustain it. I think personally, so a part of the problem is you bring in people who are, you know, 18, 19, 20 years old who yes. haven't lived in the real world. Don't in no, no 18, 19, 20 year old really is a, is, is a subject matter expert on personal finance, but when they're not, when their NCOs also went through that and don't know the basics of personal finance, they can't communicate what to do to those young troops. And that cycle just continues without somebody stepping in and say, Hey, I know how much you make. Um, let's come up with a plan to put some in your thrift savings plan. Here's how much you need to live off of. Here's how much you can, you know, you can save. Let's not buy that Mustang at 37% interest. You know, like let's be smart with the money because those that are smart with their money can, can actually get out at 20 years and be a smart. have a pretty little nice little nest egg. If you're smart with it. Exactly. And just to give it a point, I was one of those 19 years old. That's how I was when I joined. And I went out to lunch with my friend. When she went to the bathroom, I came out with a car. Because it was that easy to get a car. I only had to tell them, I got active duty. I got three more years to go. I didn't even have insurance. I, had, I called the insurance, I called USA. And they gave me the insurance, but I didn't have my car. And I left that lot with that car. I drove it, and I kind of scratched it on the way. <laughs> and I got a check, you know, before they even paid my first payment of, of credit. Because it was that easy uh, to get a car. I crashed it a year later, I got another one. Try to do that while you are on, you're out of the military. How many notes you going to get? And then most soldiers, sometimes they don't have one card. They have two. Or three no, you got to have that star card for the exchange. Yeah, or a bike for the your right. Then you got to get a credit card for uh, the, the Harley store to buy all the equipment, the, <laughs> the the pants and the helmet and all that stuff that you have to have to get on base. Yeah, and then you get out and you still have to continue paying those cards that you haven't finished mm -hmm. that most people did. And I mean... I'll even admit when I was a supervisor, I had troops that had some financial issues that came up every now and then. And I felt like I had a pretty good handle on financial literacy. Uh, I mean, even I was stumped of like, how did you get in this position? You know, how? What, because by the time it comes to the supervisor or the first sergeant, right, you know, it's probably gotten to be a problem. It's, okay. it's, it's, it's like, Hey, we're in the 11th hour and they're going to repossess my car or they're going to take my house or I, look, I got twenty dollars to my name, and I, you know, can't even buy groceries this week. It, it can be, it can become a problem so easily. Just make a late payment, and then try to catch up. Next thing you know, you're three six months behind. Yeah, well, that's why I'm glad that the years ago, I don't know when it exactly was, but they outlined the the title loan places. You know, the get get cash now, paycheck advance, those yeah. places that charge you three hundred percent interest. Yeah. Oh, it's, that is like highway robbery. And is, isn't it funny how they have them just outside of every base? But the military member is not allowed to use them. But does it mean the spouse isn't allowed? Because I think that happens. A lot. They go get, the, they go get their pay, pay advance, and now they get their 300%. 300, 300%, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a mess. Those companies shouldn't exist, but that's, that's a soapbox. But the solution is the education. Like prevent the problem to even happening in the first place before it become a problem. Because that leads to something else. Now you might not be able to pay your rent. 
or your mortgage. So you end up being in the streets or in situations where they're hostile because you have you running out of choices. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so where can, you said you're working on the episodes now. So where can people watch these when they come out? Is it all going to be on Legacy Media on your show there? Yes, it's going to be on Legacy Media. Um, you can just watch, uh, look for Umbrella of Hope on the Legacy Media website. And you can watch it on any app in your TV uh, as well. You just download the app from Legacy and you can watch it there. So you don't have to go to the website. Absolutely. I do know they have it on Roku. I know a lot of people use Roku. I've got them in my house and got it downloaded. So that's a good good place to catch it. Uh, well, I know I'm looking forward to catching some of those because I, you know, when you were having that on, I was catching what I could, where I could, but busy life schedule. I couldn't sit and watch all of them. So I'm excited to watch, you know, see, see what that, well, by now, just get a refresher of what all those topics were, but to sit down and watch them. And yes, I definitely invite you, everybody that's watching, to watch and, you know, to contribute coming years. Because at the end of the day, that's what is, that's the solution is keep being creative, keep being innovative and find solutions to the problems. Absolutely. Well, you definitely, <laughs> you definitely had a lot of guests come on, have some, some solutions. But I wanted to ask you about actually hosting the summit. Because I know there's a lot of people that host different events and there might be people out there thinking, hey, I'm going to host an event for whatever, whatever topic. What stumbling blocks did you run into trying to host this? And you hosted it digitally. So I'm just kind of curious, you know, what were some of the roadblocks that um, you might be able to give some advice for people to, to maybe bypass and make their path a little easier to, to host their summit or their event? Pre-planning. Uh, because... And pre-planning and spend seems to go wrong. Because even if you pre-plan, there's always something that goes wrong, guaranteed. Um, I wasn't expected to have 31 guests, but it came out beautiful. And I was glad that I did. I asked a couple of people, most of them said yes. So I ended up having 31, like, okay, welcome. <laughs> but that, that kind of took uh, some rearrangement of what they had planned in the beginning. And a part of form, and I'm like, okay, this is beautiful. This is going to work. So pre-plan, um, have help. You can um, get it. Uh, I actually traveled uh, to Boston to meet my friend, and she helped me host a couple of the sessions. Uh, I did it in, in a dedicated space in this, uh, over there. So I was kind of away from the distractions at home because trying to do that at home wasn't going to be easy. <laughs> um, and I also have some other guests dropping in life. And then it was a combination. I had some people pre-plan send me the videos and they ended up being live. Uh, so it was kind of mixed and the topics was very relevant, right? Uh, all of them, uh, not all of them were the same. They, so it kind of worked with the team. So pre-planning works. There's no, you can do a lot. You can do enough of it. Um, getting help and making sure that the technology works. So if you can <laughs> do a dry run. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the technology is a huge uh, element. Uh, make sure that you have all that set up before you start. So, and I think the mix that I had, it helped me a lot with that um, because it prevented a lot of those things happening. Because I had glitch. I had a couple glitches glitch going on and I had to deal with it. And I deal with it all the time. So you have to be all the time prepared to just come up with solutions. Yeah, well, you know, not, no doubt about it. You try and put something on with 31 speakers and online and scheduling and you're, you're going to have problems. Yeah. But you know, that, that's where you learn from them, right? That's where you make round two better. So is, the, is there a round two? Oh, yes. There's going to be round <laughs> two. And, and you know, I'm going to be in the Megaverse uh, event coming up on October 1st. So, of course, I'm already thinking I'm going to apply that to my next event. 
so the next event is not just going to be uh, about ideas of being creative because that's a, one of my favorite topics. Um, but yeah, you're going to be able to be in the megaverse. Just so you know. So awesome. <laughs> awesome. Well, that's, that's, you have so many things going on, Nirka. So many cool <laughs> things. The TV show, the art infusion that you're turning into, you know, mini series for the TV show, your books. I, I've lost track. We, I know you've got at least three books out. And there's more coming and more actually <laughs> it's, it's a i had two series um the one is business solutions because i think that's another problem we have the business world can be completely confusing overwhelming um so i attack every problem i face as a problem i need to solve and sometimes i just write down everything i write down everything and I come up with the resources and I come up with the, the, the solutions. So I end up turning into a book. So I'm in number three right now, working in two more books uh, coming up. And it's all going to be part of a series, how to, um, I forgot the name right now, how to build the business that fit your lifestyle. Because we all want to have different lifestyles. And there's some fundamentals in business that are pretty much the same. Your ideas might be different. The way you apply your ideas might be different, but the fundamentals are pretty much the same. So I'm giving you those fundamentals, I'm giving you the resources, so you can be as creative and build something that you're proud of. Because that's the cool, uh, I think uh, entrepreneurship is empowering. Because you get to build something out of scratch, or you can buy a business and kind of fit, make it fit into your, want, in yeah. your needs. That's wrong with that. If that's what fit you, then go go for it um so that's coming up and then i also had the other series that start with venture in the everglades and that highlights organizations uh but in a venture kind of way so i went on that fishing trip I inspired me to write about it i did a collaboration with a friend of mine that's a um a licensed therapist because she highlights the benefits so it's medically proven there's health benefits and going these kind of adventures and kind of escapes. Um, so that's also turning into a series. I actually talked to my friend and, and we're going to be writing about the ROI Cabana. So that's therapeutic as well. Use thousands of years because it was something it was invented by the Japanese for high priestess, the emperors and the samurais. And they, they use that as a way to deal with all the PTSD. They were always in war and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very soothing, right? And that's the point. So, yeah, that I'm going to be writing with her that story. And then, you know, it goes from there. Something awesome. strike me, I go with it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. That you do. <laughs> and that's why I said, you know, you, you are into a lot of different things. But they all do kind of – there's a lot of overlap. There's a, a lot of connections. And, you know, why not write a book if you're writing down all kinds of notes on things anyway? You already got half the work done, right? <laughs> well, maybe yeah. not half of it, but, you know, you know what I mean. And it's a way to utilize your ideas. But maybe you cannot put those ideas in practice right away. But you write down a book, you cannot do it. Right? You can utilize the same idea in so many different ways. So it's that that's what is, uh, you know, whatever... In, uh, capacity you have to to do it. And sometimes you need help. I, I'm not doing it by myself. I'm partnering up with the people that are the experts on this side about it. So yeah. it's actually kind of one of the interview in a book format. Yeah, just, I mean, just like, you know, partnering with a therapist, that's not your cup of tea, right? So let that expert collaborate and, and do those critical tie-ins in that book to highlight what the, the importance is. So that makes perfect sense. Yeah. A partnership like that so you are definitely one to collaborate that's for sure and so i think that's one of the the scenes that we did the best in the military so why not keep doing it you know use your strengths your skills <laughs> the military is invest thousands of dollars in your education so don't let it go to waste don't let that year bill go to waste um use it in some kind of way that is useful for you 
but you can't do it all alone, right? That's 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 one thing that people need to remember going through transitions. You can't do it all alone, whether it's business or art or anything in life. You have to have your people, uh-huh. right? You have to have those people that are in your corner that see things in a very similar way that you do. That want to just collaborate and do something good together. I mean, we're both in the Warrior Council together, Vetrepreneur Tribe together. We've talked on. I think we've talked over the years on just about every topic there is to possibly talk about, but there's other warrior council members that I've had on this podcast that I've collaborated with in different ways outside of that uh, for the podcast, for my business and stuff like that. And it's just amazing when two people or three people have similar ideas and you can just create something out of that. It's awesome. You have to find your battle buddies. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there you go. Thanks, Nierka, for the time. And I appreciate that. Yeah, you have to find your tribe. You have to find those people that are going to have your back. And they're going to help you enhance your ideas. Um, and good. I come up with so many ideas. But sometimes they need to be polished a lot. Uh, so I surround with myself with those people that can help me do that. You know, it don't have to be perfect. I need to have the idea. You have to have the vision. And then it's finding those people that can make that vision a reality. Sometimes you need that person that says no too, right? Yeah. I know it's happened to both of us. We've been we've been in meetings together and you pitch an idea or you got your thought process and somebody else in the room or on Zoom anyway just says something like, Are you sure? You know, I don't yeah. I don't know that that sounds like the best way to go about this or or that or or just plain out, I don't think your idea is gonna work. You know, and here's why. You know, sometimes it's a tough pill to swallow. I've I've been the recipient of that a few times and it's like, oh, okay. I value this person's opinion and their expertise and it, you know, makes you step back and and think about things and look at it from a different perspective and see if they're right. At the end of the day, it's your choice to move forward, but it's a hard pill to swallow, but some, you know, you can't surround yourself with, what do they call it? The yes men, you know what I mean? That are just going to be like, oh yeah, sounds like a brilliant idea. Go with it. Well, and that's the thing. Always expect for your plans to go wrong. Right. We have to do the planning. That's important. It's kind of, kind of brainstorming. That's part of your brainstorming and how to make the thing that you want to uh, make it happen. Right. But there are things that you know foreseeing that are going to come up. And there's a reason for it. I think I, I started writing that book on my own. I came back from the fishing trip. I was 100% inspired. I love it. I took so many pictures. So I like, okay, I need to write about it. So I just wrote, that wrote, wrote. Like it was uh, a whole day of writing and I got a story. It was a mess, but it was a beautiful mess. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I edited this story so many times. Um, almost two years later, I went with my friend. She finally read the story like, okay, well, we need to do some of this and we can add this and we can put this here. And... I got all those pictures that I took and I make it part of the narrative because that's what the piece that was missing, right? It was her input, her tweaking that make it into a bigger idea of what I had. It empowered my idea a hundred percent. You know, sometimes the problems, all the obstacles that we come across, and there's many, it's just part of the solution. It's what makes you think, oh my God, what's going on? You know, I don't get upset anymore. It's like every time I plan something, things go 100% totally different, but that's okay. I like, okay, well, what's trying to teach me now? What I'm missing? You know, I, I can tell you so many stories like that, but it's your mindset, it's your attitude. How are you going to solve? Yes, yeah, you just can't solve it yourself. That's the power of entrepreneurship and collaboration there. You know, bringing other people in that just have expertise or a different view than you do and working together and achieving the goal. That is it. Like that's in a, that's it. That's it in a nutshell right there. You know, that's that's just that's that's what entrepreneurs do. Business it's not a one person job. You have to surround yourself with lots of people. You're going to have to even just to get if you have a product, 
you have to find where to sell your product. You have to deal with customers. You have to deal with the, the suppliers of that product. There's so many things you have to, uh, you have to deal with the people that are, are providing the services that you need to sell that product. So you need to surround yourself with the right people that make you or the right services and the right organizations that make you successful in selling that product in a nutshell. And it, it, that applies to everything. You know, it, it don't have to be a product. It can be a service. It can be uh, whatever you want to be in business about. Yeah, that sounds like a great topic for a, for another episode. There, finding the right partnerships. I think so. Maybe we have to maybe have to do some creative stuff and maybe have some do something special, a special show or something about that. Because that's that's a good one. I like that, Mirka. That's a good that's a good nugget of information there. We might have to okay. brainstorm on that one. <laughs> but it is important though. It's about finding that right person, right? It's about trust. Can they do the job? Um, well, a lot of it's about trust, right? Do you trust this person and their ability to to do what's right? Are they, you know, do they do they fit what you're looking for? Whatever, whatever it is you're trying to do. So, but anyway, not going down that rabbit hole, Nirka. I just want to say appreciate you coming back on, being the first repeat guest again on the awesome. show. Uh, so it was great to catch up and hear and share with the world all the different things that you've done over this last year, year and a half. People really need to hop on like Ernie Media. And check it out. Um, I like I said, I really can't wait to watch watch some of those. It'd be a lot easier to watch them one or two a night than <laughs> than it was to to sit down and watch all of them as as you had the summit going on. So that's incredible to be able to go back and revisit some of those. So, Nirka, I appreciate you stopping on the on the podcast again and sharing an update with us. Thank you. I appreciate you for having me here and giving me the honor of being the first repeat guest. <laughs> And I really encourage every viewer to watch the episodes because it might be the golden nugget that you need. And that's what it's all about. Uh, there's there's, a, there's so many. <laughs> there's a lot of different topics. There is. There's, I think, something for everybody. Every There's at least one in there that, that everybody could get something to take away. From. But um, I know I've got your, your website scrolling at the bottom here, amuraumbrella.com. Anything you want to know about New York is on that website. It's, it's all on there. The umbrellas, if you'd like to buy one, the books, uh, podcast, all the different things that you've got going on. It's all there, uh, but have no fear. It will be in the show notes for anybody who's who's watching or listening and wants to find it. Uh, I will put Legrity Media in there as well in case you're interested. There's a lot of positive programming on there. Um, there's a handful of shows uh, on various different topics, so people need to check that out too. So, Yurka, once again, I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Until next time. There you go, folks. I hope you enjoyed that episode. And if, uh, first catch up with a past guest, uh, you can go to my website, boundabodypodcast.net, to find resources and information. Once again, if you always if you find something that's not on there that should, please reach out to me and let me know so we can try and get that added on there. And if you're struggling right now, remember the National Suicide Hotline is 988-PRESS-1, or you can text 838255.